Hello, in this video we're going to look at an example of figuring out whether given vectors are eigenvectors or not for a given matrix um, and finding the corresponding eigenvalues in the case when the eigenvectors have complex entries. Uh, the matrix that we're going to be uh, working with is the following 2x2 two two matrix. Uh, its entries are uh, in the first row 2 and 8 and in the second row, minus two, sorry, minus one and minus two. Um, the vectors we are given along with the matrix are k1 equals zero, zero, k2 equals um, two plus two i and minus one, and k3 equals 2 plus 2i two is the first uh, entry and 1 the second entry. Um, I must apologize here. Uh, I use a square bracket for the matrix A and round brackets for the column vectors K. This is inconsistent. I should have either used uh, square brackets in both cases or round brackets in both cases. So please forgive me for that. I'm not going to change it now, but for, um, for the next uh, um, things that we will write down, we're going to use square brackets in all the cases. Okay, so um, uh, what we want now is to figure out whether these vectors that we're given, the k1, k2, and k3, whether they are eigenvectors for the given matrix. Um, how can we figure something like that out? Well, it might be useful to, uh, first of all, remind ourselves what is the definition of something being an eigenvector of a matrix. A, k, a vector k is an eigenvector when a times k is equal to lambda times k for some value of lambda. Lambda here is a scalar. So k is an eigenvector when we can find a lambda for which a k equals lambda k. Uh, but this is not the only requirement in the definition of an eigenvector. The other requirement is that k cannot be a zero vector. Although uh, when k is a zero vector the equation will hold, in fact for um, any value of lambda because l any any scalar times zero will always be zero and a, a times k when k is a zero vector will be zero. Um, uh, although it, it is true for any lambda, um, k uh, equals zero is not considered as a, as a eigenvector because um, that's how eigenvector is defined. So by definition we choose not to call a zero vector an eigenvector. Uh, okay. Now, um, with the vectors that we're given, we notice then immediately after the remark we just made that k1 is the zero vector. And so, uh, by the definition of uh, an eigenvector, which is not allowed to uh, be a zero vector, we can see that k1 isn't uh, an eigenvector for the given matrix. Uh, what remains to check is whether k2 and k3 are eigenvectors. And uh, to do that, uh, uh, we can compute a k in each case and compare that to lambda k and see if we can find an appropriate lambda that would make a k equal lambda k. Okay, so let's uh, start with the first one, uh, which is a, a k2. So what will be a times k2? Uh, a is the matrix 2, 8, minus 1, minus 2, and we have to multiply that with the column vector 2 plus 2i uh, and minus 1 in the second entry. And so by the usual rule of how we multiply a matrix uh, with another one, um, this is equal to the following. So it is 2 times 2 plus 2i, and then we have plus 8 times minus 1. And in the second entry we have minus 1 times, again, 2 plus 2i, and then we have um, plus minus 2 times minus 1. Uh, let's simplify the expression. We open up brackets in the first entry and we will get um, 4 and then there is minus 8. 4 minus 8 is minus 4 so we have minus 4 and the complex part of that number is going to be uh, 4i so it's, it's minus 4 plus 4i. What about the second entry? The real part is minus 2 plus 2, and that's 0. And the complex part is minus 
2, and there is no other complex part there, so it's just minus 2i. Okay? Um, so that's a times k2. What we want to know is whether um, this um, vector is uh, equal to lambda k for some value of k. How do we find this out? Well, let's see what lambda k is equal to. Um, in this case, of course, k is k2, so I should have written k2 there. Uh, so what is lambda k2? Uh, lambda multiplies in, so it's um, 2 lambda plus 2 lambda i, and uh, in the second entry there we have minus lambda. Now the equality of these two column vectors means that the corresponding um, entries are equal. So we want to figure out if it's possible or not to find the lambda so that minus 4 plus 4i equals 2 lambda plus 2 lambda i and at the same time it's a case of a system of linear equations with complex entries and at the same time minus 2i is equal to lambda. You see uh, from by combining these equations um, we see the, we not notice the following um, So, because by the second line, lambda is equal to... Okay, so maybe I should um, rather uh, look at the first line first. So, if I look at the first line, I can see that... Uh, you see, we have equality here of two complex numbers, and two complex numbers are equal when their real and imaginary parts are equal. So, on one hand, minus 4 needs to be equal to 2 lambda for the real parts to be equal, and on the other hand, minus 4i... Uh, but we can now uh, uh, disregard the i minus four, which is the imaginary coefficient. Minus four needs to—I mean, the coefficient of the imaginary part of the of the complex number. Minus four needs to be equal to two lambda as well. Um, why did I say minus four? Sorry, it should be plus four, um, and that is uh, fine. Um, actually, it is not fine, right? Because uh, so the, the first one is, is going to give that lambda is it must be equal to minus 2, and the second one is going to give that uh, lambda is equal to 2. And of course, lambda cannot be minus 2 and 2 at the same time. Uh, the, the third equation makes it even worse, although it's already uh, bad enough. Uh, this says that lambda has to be equal to 2 minus 2i. So this is completely crazy. Of course, it's not possible for the same lambda to be these three different numbers at the same time. And that answers the question, right? We wanted to know if there is such a lambda or not, and we saw there isn't. So then, k2 cannot be an eigenvector for the given matrix. Okay, now let's look at the third vector, um, which was 2 plus 2i, and the second coefficient there was was 1 instead of minus 1 and let's multiply a with um, with that vector I'm going to oh sorry I think you didn't see what I was talking here about so th there we go k3 is 2 plus 2i in the first entry and 1 in the second entry so we're going to multiply that by a um, so that's that's the vector we're multiplying a by and A is um, the matrix 2, 8, minus 1, minus 2. And when we multiply them, let's see what we get. So, so this is going to be A times K3, right? Um, we have, as before, um, well, similarly to what we had before, 2 times 2 plus 2i plus 8 times 1. And a bit down below there, we have minus 1 times 2 plus 2i and um, plus minus 2 times 1. Uh, let's see what that gives us. So the real part uh, this time is 8 plus 4 is 12. And the imaginary part is 4. 
So we have 12 plus 4i in the first entry. And um, then uh, down here, we've got minus 2 uh, plus another minus 2. So it's minus 4. And the uh, imaginary part is uh, minus 2. I. So we don't need to put a plus there, we just have minus 2i there. Okay. Now the question is, uh, as before, um, is it possible to find a lambda that would make, remember we want a k3 equal to some lambda times k3. So is it possible to find a lambda that would make um, k3 which is 2 plus 2i and 1 in the second entry we want this to be equal to that lambda times 12 plus 4i and minus 4 minus 2i so that's what we want to figure out writing this out um, uh, is a system of equations since we want the um, the column vectors to be equal for this we need each of the entries to be equal to the corresponding entry in the other column vector. So what we get here is that um, 2 plus 2i, uh, well the column vector here um, uh, when we multiply lambda in, in will become, um, will have the same terms but now each term will be multiplied by lambda. So that we want this to be equal to lambda times 12 plus 4i and we want the other one, which is 1, equal to lambda times minus 4 minus 2i. So the question is, is there a lambda that makes both of these equalities hold at the same time? Well, um, of course, if uh, lambda was a, was a real number, we wouldn't be able to find such uh, value. But maybe we can find such value when lambda is a complex number. Which, by the way, um, makes me think that perhaps in the previous case we made a little um, mistake. When we were comparing, so right here, when we were comparing um, these expressions, um, we assumed that lambda was a real number because that's how we, we got... Um, saying that four minus 4 must be equal to 2 lambda, since if lambda is a real number, then 2 lambda is indeed the uh, real part of, of this um, complex number. But if lambda isn't uh, a real number, then uh, 2 lambda will not be the real part. So it, it was wrong to say that minus 4 must be equal to 2 lambda. So actually what we did here isn't quite right, and we have to redo that. Sorry about that. I, I honestly missed that point. Um, and so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to first correct this here, and then we're going to go back to the second co computation and complete that afterwards, okay? So let us correct this by deleting what we wrote there. Um, I want to take all of this out now. And instead of that, we want to see what we can do. Well, the second equality here, which is lambda being equal to 2 minus 2i, already gives us the value for lambda. So all we have to do is to substitute this value of lambda into the first equality and see if the first equality for this lambda will hold. Okay, so will minus 4 plus 4i equal to 2 times minus 2i plus 2 times minus 2i times i? That's what we want to see. If, if they are equal, then that's fine. Then the, then the lambda given here um, would work, right? Okay, so um, the left-hand side is what it is. Nothing to do further there. What about the right-hand side? Uh, what is 2 times minus 2i? Uh, um, that's minus 4i, right? And what about um, the other side? So i times i is minus 1. Uh, but we have another minus there, so we'll have a plus there. So it's minus 4i plus 4. And so you see, uh, these two things are not equal. Uh, in fact, one is uh, the other one times minus 1. Uh, and then, 
again the answer actually by accident but it turns out to be the same answer that such lambda cannot be found so our conclusion um, that k2 isn't an eigenvector accidentally turned out to be the correct conclusion but the way we worked out the first time was completely wrong because when k is a is a complex number I mean when k is a complex vector a vector with complex entries and a only has real entries then of course we do expect uh, the uh, eigenvalue um, well perhaps not necessarily um, but I'm actually not sure about this right now in this moment but it, it, it was certainly natural to expect that the eigenvalue could have been a complex number and we completely disregarded that possibility with our previous calculation. Okay, so let's, go, let's get back to the second calculation where we, um, we are now um, cautious of the fact that lambda could be a complex number and uh, perhaps we want to apply a similar technique as we did before to get lambda out of um, the second equality um, because that's easier than getting lambda out of the first equality. So by the second equality, lambda will be equal to 1 divided by minus 4 minus 2i. Um, but we really want to write this out uh, as uh, a complex number uh, in its canonical form with real and imaginary part. How do we do that? Well, there is a trick here. Uh, we can multiply by the con conjugate both um, of the denominator, uh, both the denominator and the denominator, and the result of this, of course, is not different from the original fraction, but uh, conveniently we will get something that um, can be then simplified to a canonical form of writing a complex number. Okay, so since we multipl multiplied both nominator and denominator by the same complex number, the result of the quotient doesn't change, but now, on the other hand, uh, we can uh, uh, use the standard formula for uh, computing the denominator, which gives us 16 uh, plus, uh, actually minus, because there is an i squared here, 16 minus 4. And in the denominator, we have um, minus 4 plus 2i. And this works out to be, well, 16 minus 4 is... Uh, 12, right? So we have minus 4 plus 2i divided by 12. But now we can um, divide each of the terms by 12. So we'll have minus 1 over 3 plus uh, 1 over 6 times i. And this is a canonical form for writing out uh, lambda as a complex number. And uh, then it, it will be easy now to, to make use of this. Uh, into the and put it into the first equality to see if the first equality for this lambda will hold. You see the second equality forces lambda to be this one and we want both of the equalities to hold. We want both um, this equality and the other one to hold. So um, because the second one suggests lambda should be this then, then all that remains to check is whether this lambda works or not for the first equality as well. Okay. Uh, so to do that, we'll have to check that 2 plus 2i is equal to um, minus 3 plus 1 over 6i multiplied by 12 plus 4i. So t let's see what uh, this product looks like. Um, okay. Uh, minus 1 over 3 times 12 is, of course, minus 4. Then we have minus 4 over 3i. Then we have plus uh, 12 over 6i. And finally we have plus 4 over 6i squared. And this uh, is equal to minus 4 Okay, so what happens with uh, 12 over 6? Well, 12 over 6 is 2i, and here we have minus 4 over 3i, minus 4 over 3, um, plus 2, right? So actually it will be 2 minus 4 over 3, right? 
that is multiplied by i. And then at the end there, we have uh, i squared, which is minus 1. So it's minus 4 over 6. And so what this gives us is, um, okay, we have to do lots of um, funny things here. But I think it is quite clear that we are not getting um, the value here will not be equal um, to this value because we are getting here um, fractional, in other words, rational, non-integer, uh, real and imaginary part. And in this complex number, um, they are integers, 2 uh, and 2. So we, we clearly cannot have um, this being equal to 2 plus 2i, which means that the second vector also, um, neither the second vector is uh, an eigenvector for the uh, given matrix, since we were not able to find the lambda. And this looks a little bit suspicious. Uh, so I want to actually double check that, we, that I haven't made uh, more mistakes. I'm going to do that while the video is paused. And if I discover that I have made mistakes, you will hear about them in just about uh, two seconds. So it turns out that I did make mistakes, quite a number of them. Okay, so let me explain where uh, the mistakes were made. Uh, so the first mistake that I made was in here. Um, when I was writing out 8k2, well that was all fine, but then um, when we compared it to lambda k2, um, lambda k2 has minus 1, um, it has minus 1, sorry, minus lambda in the second entry, and we were supposed to compare minus 2i with minus lambda. So here we wrote minus 2i equals lambda, but it should have been minus 2i equals minus lambda. Um, perhaps you already noticed that as I was writing this down, um, so my apologies for the annoyance. Um, of having to be patient with my calculations where you knew that they would have been wrong. Um, and then uh, with lambda being equal to 2i, uh, look what's going to happen. Of course, if minus 2i is equal to minus lambda, then lambda is equal to 2i. Um, what will happen then is that we will then be substituting that value here, uh, lambda equals to 2i in here, and when we do that, and when we uh, do the calculation, on the right-hand side, we will end up with plus 4i minus 4, which is exactly what we had here. It's just that the terms were swapped around. So we do get the equality we were looking for. Um, lambda being equal to 2i turns out to be the eigenvalue uh, for the eigenvector uh, k2. So the answer here is that k2 is an eigenvector uh, for the eigenvalue lambda equals to 2i. Okay. Um, in the other calculation, I also made a mistake, although that one doesn't change the answer. The mistake I made is right here, and again, apologies for that. Um, so, when we were um, uh, making this fraction, uh, writing out canonical form for this fraction, we multiplied by the both top and bottom by the conjugate, um, and the conjugate is of minus 4 minus 2i is minus 4 plus 2i, but then uh, accidentally um, in the denominator I just wrote two copies of, the, of that conjugate instead of keeping the original minus 4 minus 2i there. And that would have changed some of the cal computations. They are corrected here with the red. However, um, in the ca calculation of the of of this um, um, right hand side, we still get uh, a complex number with uh, non-integer um, real and imaginary part. So it still cannot be equal to two plus two i. So then uh, the conclusion there is that k and I think this is k three. Let me have a look. Yeah, so k3 is not um, an eigenvector for a. So k3, since such a lambda cannot be found, because the, the, the only lambda that would have worked is this one, and this lambda does not work for... Um, remember, we had two equations here, and so the second equation gives this lambda, but then that lambda doesn't satisfy the first equation. And so K3 is not um, 
an eigenvector for the given matrix A. That concludes uh, this video. I just want to uh, make one other remark, uh, namely going back to the original question um, and addressing the question that we were not supposed to, but um, just in a few words maybe it is worthwhile to um, say something about that. And namely the question is, uh, what about other eigenvalues and eigenvectors for A? Well, we were working with two specific vectors, um, so uh, we're not supposed to know at this point uh, if A has other eigenvalues and eigenvectors, because we just checked that the given ones, whether they were or not. But from the given ones, we can generate others. Um, uh, the scalar multiple of any eigenvector is still an eigenvector. And moreover, um, so, so that of course that gives that k2 times any uh, scalar would still be an eigenvector. And moreover, when we have a matrix with uh, real entries, and that matrix has a complex uh, eigenvalue, uh, it turns out that the conjugate of that eigenvalue is still an eigenvalue. And moreover, uh, the conjugate of the eigenvector is the eigenvector for that conjugate eigenvalue. So the conjugate of k2 which would be obtained by conjugating each of the uh, entries in, a, in K2 would still be an eigenvector for A with the eigenvalue being the conjugate of the eigenvalue we found here. So the eigenvalue we found there was lambda equals to 2i and the conjugate of that will be minus 2i. So that we, we can see from these results that minus 2i is, is still an eigenvalue of A and the conjugate of K2 is an eigenvector for that eigenvalue. Thank you.